Welcome back to the Glacial Gold Hunter. We're here at a gravel quarry in Wisconsin and last time we were here we found a pretty cool mineralized vein. It was just sitting in a boulder. We chipped a little bit of it out but I couldn't quite tell what the minerals is. So today I want to take a little bit more scientific approach. I want to collect as much of that vein as I can and officially send it off for assay. But first I got to see if I can find it again. I will find you. This is it. I told you I would find you. Now in this quarry, I know in the past they found copper nuggets. This is an area of Wisconsin where there used to be copper mines. Now a vein this small would never be anything profitable. This is what we would call a stringer. It's just a little string of something that goes shooting off, but you can't really track it and there's no fault line. At least I haven't seen anything on the high wall that would indicate that there's an actual vein structure going through. It's just a stringer. Now I don't know exactly what's in this vein. I do see some signs of copper and there's a really metallic looking mineral. I think it's galena, but it's some kind of sulfide. But that's why I want to send it off for assay. I want to know what's in this thing. Now for those who don't know, an assay is a chemical assessment of the elements in a rock. It'll tell you what ions are there and how much. That's how miners know if the deposit is profitable to go in and extract or not. But the first thing I gotta do is get it out of the rock. That's where this guy comes in. For extraction, I'm just gonna go the old fashioned route. Actually, before you ever hit rocks, it's really important to wear safety goggles. Or you'll end up with shrapnel in your eye. Plus you look really cool in your goggles. Mining is hard. I didn't know that. I just, uh, you're telling me now for the first time. Now, Native Americans are no stranger to mining copper in the area. They'd find copper deposits and they'd extract it. But the way they did it is they'd find a source of copper and then build a great big fire around it. That would cause the rock to break off. So maybe I could try a method like that. Gonna need more fire. Well, this isn't working at all. Guess we're just gonna stick to the old fashioned way. Good old fashioned blunt force trauma. You can see the vein is starting to cleave away from the rock. That might make it easier and cleaner. Haha. -ha. There we go. So now I just need to fill a bucket of pieces like that. Whew. Oh. Wow. That's so cool. Just so many colors. All that green malachite, copper carbonate. And look at this. Look at that metallic something. We're gonna get it assayed and find out. Look at it.
Hats off to all the old time miners who did this by hand. Holy cow, it's hard work. When I worked in the mines, some of the miners would make a hundred grand a year. And my boss said they never made money, they earned it. And they were using hydraulic and pneumatic jackhammers. They didn't do it by hand like the old timers, my goodness. Well, the angle at which I can hit this isn't really cleaving the vein off. It's just kind of smashing it. But I think I got enough for assay. I got a bunch of nice clean pieces of vein. So I'm going to take that home and we're going to prep it and send it off somewhere. Of course, I'd need a lot bigger vein than this or a lot more little ones like this for this to be profitable. But we've never cared about profit before. So why start now? I'm just so curious on what's in there. So we're back at the shop and we got some amazing pieces. And I think these are going to work just fine for assay. Now, it was a big ordeal to find an assay company that would actually take a sample like this. All the places I looked at either didn't get back to me, they're not based in America, or they have a $500 minimum for orders. I'm just a little guy. I just want one sample. But here's what I found. So I was given this website, xrfanalysistest.com. Now, there's a lot of different tests you can do. XRD, x-ray diffraction, that'll tell me the mineralogy of the piece. XRF, x-ray fluorescence. That'll tell me the elements in the piece. And then there's a fire assay as well. Now from what I understand, XRF will give me a broader spectrum of elements, but with less accuracy than a fire assay. Being that I kind of just want a base metal analysis of what's in this, I think I'm gonna go with the XRF. But still, an XRF analysis is $100. So I really doubt this YouTube video is gonna pay for itself. But I'm gonna pull a trigger, spend 100 bucks, send this off to the lab. Now what am I looking for? Well, with that green, I know there's copper in here. I believe there to be galena, which is a lead sulfide, so I expect there to be lead, but there can be a significant amount of silver in galena as well. So I wanna know if there's silver. Of course, I wanna know if there's any gold mixed in with this. And I'm curious if there's molybdenum along with the copper too, because commonly they come together. And molybdenum, I believe, looks a lot like galena does. So it'll help me isolate what that is. You can have other elements mixed in with the sulfides. And I see a little bit of oxidation, so I'm expecting there's some iron in here as well. But let's see what the lab has to say. So I just ordered the test with shipping. It's over $109. And apparently they're gonna ship me some kind of kit. Then I process it and I'll have to ship it to them later. I was hoping I could just ship this right to them, but we'll wait. Well, while we wait for the test to come, I figured I'd take some of these minerals and try to dissolve them away. I saw Dan Hurd do something like this and it turned out pretty cool. You can see the vein is sandwiched between the basalt there and it's all calcite. So calcite is easy to dissolve. So I got some 30% vinegar here. Could use muriatic acid, but that's more dangerous. But I'm gonna see if this works to dissolve that calcite away. It's not really fizzing. If that doesn't do it, I'll go get muriatic acid but I'll leave that there for a few days. Well, the vinegar isn't strong enough, so we're gonna bump it up to muriatic acid. It's cheaper and I know it's gonna work better. So those are dissolved and I'll tell you what, muriatic acid is the way to go. Don't even waste your time with the vinegar. But I dissolved away a lot of that calcite and revealed those sulfides and they look really cool. But there's this greenish glaze that has taken over them and that is a sign of copper. I'm not really sure why it turned green, but it is. It's cool. You're probably wondering what that is on my face. Well, my wife was doing a little painting and I said something and now I got this thing on my face. Anyway, an update on the sample. When I ordered the sample, I expected to get an order number or a receipt or something, or I expected them to send me a sample kit, something like that. I waited weeks and I didn't get anything. I called them five times, left multiple messages, never heard from them, and I was starting to think I got scammed. Finally, they called me back and they said, oh, it's fine, just send us a sample and we'll do the test. So far, I'm not thrilled. I think it's overpriced and not great customer service, but I'm gonna send this sample off anyway. Probably wait a few more weeks. Meanwhile, I found another company much cheaper, so I'm gonna give them a try and I'll let you know how that goes. So I just shipped that sample off on one of these little envelopes and that's another $5.65 to the bill. Please do leave a comment and a like on the video because that counts as user engagement. The more user engagement I have, the more the video makes. 
That's how YouTube works. It gives you a higher CPM to use the lingo. Anyway, I also got a quote from ALS Geochemistry. They have laboratories all over the globe, but this one's in Reno, Nevada. Now they have a method called aquaregia, which I guess dissolves all the minerals. It's for non-silicate minerals, and since this is a carbonate, it should work well. And that's only $33 for a sample. $10.75 for the sample prep, and that's them to crush it to the right size. So it's way cheaper, but they got me on administrative fees. Administrative fees. Administrative. Administrative. Administrative fees. 39 bucks for administrative fees. But I don't know if that's a one-time thing to set up my account or if I have to do that for every time I use them. Anyway, this seems like a lot cheaper company to go with. And I plan on doing this again with maybe some other samples. So I want to have an account ready to go. <laughs> Please hit the like button. Now we wait. So it's been like a month since I shipped off the samples. I heard back from one company, but I haven't heard anything back from the original company. So I'm going to call them. Thank you for calling the PMG Group, the home of Prime Market Global and Chili Dot Cold Sponges, Prestige Minerals and Gems, and Kimberlites.net, as well as our XRF and Assay Lab, PMG Resources and Yoda Liners Automotive Parts, our real estate development operations in Panoramic Mountain Group and PMG Group, Florida. Sorry we missed your call. If you could please leave us a detailed message with your name. So that company seems like they're involved with every, everything. Real estate, automotive parts, gems and minerals. So far, I'm not impressed. Now the ALS Global Group, they seem very professional. They sent me back an email saying they have the results. I just have to figure out how to do a wire transfer through the bank accounts to pay for it. Then they'll send me the results, which seems really weird. So I gotta go to the bank and figure that out. The XRF analysis testing though is not panning out. Nothing's easy. Now the test routes are in and they're pretty interesting. Both companies gave very different results, but I think I know why. The first test I'll go over is the XRF results. That's from the Cold Plunge Automotive Real Estate Company that happens to have a mineral and gem department. I'll post the results here. You can pause to read. But when they sent me these numbers, I noticed there's no units on it. And a number without a unit is essentially useless. I assumed they were percentages, but I emailed them and said, hey, what are the units? And the response I got was, hang on, let me ask my boss. They confirmed that they were percentages and you can see that the largest percent is silica. Makes sense. Or does it? So we have 23% silica, 15% magnesium, 8% calcium, 5% aluminum, 3% iron, 3% titanium, and 1% copper. Now those are not at all what I expected because the metallic mineral that I wanted them to test was presumably a sulfide. I would call it galena, which should have a lot of lead, a lot of sulfur, but I do think there are some other sulfides in there like chalcopyrite that should have a lot more copper, not to mention the matrix of calcite, which should have no silicates in there. So the fact that I see silica as a number one element is an alarming thing. Now, because I know the mineralogy of basalt, when I look at these results, I am not seeing a test of the mineralized metallic mineral in the vein. I'm seeing the, the results of basalt. The mineralogy of basalt is a lot of pyroxene, of plagioclase, of olivine. Those can be magnesium rich minerals, but there's no reason why galena or any of the sulfide should be magnesium rich. These elements are consistent with the mineralogy of basalt. So what I think happened is when they take the XRF test, they just have a little laser gun that pinpoints a small spot. They zap it, the electrons are excited and they can read the elements. But if they're off from the sample that I want them to test, I'm gonna get a completely different result. So I circled a spot that I wanted them to test, but if they weren't careful, or if they just took the piece and zapped it, just because I pestered them seven times and they did the test result the day of my pestering. What I think they did is they just grabbed the sample, zapped the basalt, got the readings, and sent it to me. I gave them notes describing what I wanted, but for all I know, it was a real estate agent or an automotive secretary that took the test. I don't know that this was done by a, a geologist or anybody that cares about minerals. So the XRF test is junk. I think it was a complete waste of money. 
very disappointed. Now the ALS Global, that test is very different and I think much more reliable. The way this test was done was aquaregia, which is a mixture of acids that dissolve the sample. Then once it's all dissolved, they test that. So it's getting a much more thorough reading of the elements in the piece. It doesn't dissolve silicates, but it does dissolve everything else, which is what I wanted them to test. Now these readings come out in parts per million and roughly you can think of it as grams per ton. Now I'll just run through some of the notable high spots in the testing and our first valuable mineral that we have a good amount of is silver. Now I was thinking the mineral was galena and that makes sense because oftentimes galena has a fair amount of silver. Sometimes it's profitable enough to mine for silver. But in this case, we have 8.15 parts per million. So that's about eight grams per ton. It's a small vein, it would take a lot of work to get a ton of this, but if you did, you could probably get eight grams of silver out of it. To go along with proving it's galena, there is 34 parts per million of lead. So a lot higher lead quantity, that makes sense. As far as gold, no gold. Well, less than 0.02 parts per million. So no gold. It's so over 25% calcium, which makes sense because the vein is calcite and there's 5% copper. And that's really cool because that might actually be ore grade if you could find enough of the vein. It's so small, it wouldn't be worth it, but that's a fair amount of copper in a little vein. Some other interesting things that I didn't expect, there's 12 parts per million of cerium, and that's a rare earth element. Now, why would there be so much cerium in this? I don't know, but looking in it, there's a mineral called Bastnasite. I've never heard of that before, but it's a carbonate fluoride mineral that contains a lot of cerium and it forms in hydrothermal vein deposits, which is what we have here. So Bastnasite. So that's very cool. It's 20 parts per million of barium, five parts per million cadmium, 2,410 parts per million of manganese, 65 parts per million of strontium, 125 parts per million of zinc. And that makes sense because zinc often moves with lead. So if you have a lead deposit, you're probably gonna find some zinc minerals in there too. But a lot of cool things. There's a lot of rare earth elements in there. And the thing about rare earth elements is they aren't really rare. The thing that makes them difficult to acquire is that they're so disseminated. They're everywhere, they're easy to find, but to find a concentration of them, that's what's really kind of rare. But rare earth elements are a byproduct of a lot of mining and we could get a ton of them. It's just not economically feasible to extract them. So we leave that up to China. That's why China has so much of the rare earths. It's just cheaper for them. So we don't do it ourselves, but we have the rare earth elements in America. It all comes down to cost, it's business. Business, business. Overall, I find that absolutely fascinating to be able to do that. I will be using ALS Global again I will never do another XRF test again unless I had the gun in my hand and I know exactly what area I'm shooting and have an idea of what the results should be. But definitely, I don't think that was a trustworthy test. I will say with the ALS Global, I was able to pay with a credit card and I didn't have to do the bank wire transfer because that was an extra $25. By the way, here's the receipt of the testing for ALS Global. So you can see exactly how the cost is broken down. But super cool results. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the like button and leave a comment because that really helps the video. Let me know if you want me to do more testing later on. Come on back for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.